Uh, good day, yeah. everyone. Okay. Good day, everyone. My name is Lashon Olo. I'm from Vets University. I'm supervised by Professor Derry from Vets and Dr. Morgan from Etemba Labs. My topic is the synthesis and modification of boron nitride nanotubes formed using ion implantation. This is my outline. I'll take you through the introduction, ion solid interactions, boron nitride nanotubes, experimental methods, results and discussions, and I'll conclude on my work. In my introduction, I have motivation, problem statement, and objectives. The motivation of my work is basically diamond. Diamond is mostly considered as the strongest material known, but that answer can be misleading because hardness, toughness, and strength are different properties. A material can be strong in one way and weak in the other way. There are materials that can resist force better, and some materials can uh, resist scratching much better. Where diamond is not a tough material, but, but a hard one, because if you gradually apply force to it, it will break, and, but not deform. Uh, types of nanotubes. And this is one of the reasons why I'm working on nanotubes because uh, as synthesizing materials that have better properties than diamond has captured the interest of the material science community. Types of nanotubes is multi-wall, multi-layer nanotubes and single-wall nanotubes. Uh, classifications of nanotubes, we have zigzag, chiral, and armchair nanotubes depending on the rolling direction. For my problem statement, boron nitride and other boron nitride structures are normally synthesized under high temperature and pressure conditions. For the purpose of this experiment, I'm going to uh, determine the parameters that are suitable for the growth of boron nitride nanotubes, see how ion implantation affects boron nitride nanotubes and determine the properties of boron nitride nanotubes. My, my ob objectives is that I'm going to grow boron nitride nanotubes on silicon substrate using chemical vapor deposition method, determine the effects of radiation on boron, boron nitride nanotubes, and determine the parameters that affect change. Ion solid interactions. Uh, the fundamentals of ion solid interactions. Ion solid interactions is the field in material science where high energy particles are accelerated on the surface of material. And this will cause radiation or particles to be emitted. And they can be analyzed using different characterization techniques. Uh, and as Rutherford and Neil Bohr designed different experiments showing that how part particles penetrate, slow down and stop in them. But for the purpose of my experiment, I'm only using ion implantation. Boron nitride nanotubes, as already mentioned, are formed uh, by folding and rolling sheets into cylindrical forms, having zigzag, armchair, and chiral structures. That includes carbon nanotubes in general and also boron nitride nanotubes. Uh, boron nitride nanotubes' electronic pro properties are different than that of carbon nanotubes. Carbon nanotubes are either metallic or semiconductive, and boron nitride nanotubes are semiconductive. This is just a table comparing the properties of BNNTs and CNTs. This is my experimental methods. For my experimental methods, I used a silicon wafer. I cut it into pieces of substrates and I transferred those pieces into an ultrasonic bath for cleaning. And I used a mix of boron, magnesium oxide and iron two oxide as my precursors and placed the substrates on top of the precursors inside a crucible. Then I transferred the crucible into a tube furnace. Uh, the crucible was placed inside a cross tube, a horizontal cross tube, and this cross tube was placed inside the horizontal tube of the furnace. And the gas cylinders were connected to the cross tube that was connected to the water filtration system. Temperature was slowly increased while the ion gas was allowed to run through the cross tube so that I can create an inert environment into the system. When the desired temperature was reached, I slowly introduced the ammonia gas. So my experiments were run at 900, 1000, 1100 for an hour. Then uh, ion implantation was used. Uh, ion implantation <coughs> was done using the variant exterior ion implanter at the Temba Labs. Implantations were carried out using uh, fluences of one and five times 10 to the power 40 ions per centimeter squared. 
uh, using energies of, of uh, 150 keV at room temperature. Then I used ramen, uh, so I, uh, I, I, I took my samples for ramen analysis before and after I used plantation. And I, I used a scanning electron microscope to determine the topography on, on, of what's on the surface of my samples. And I used placing incidence for my XLD analysis. For my results and discussions, the results and discussions here is the scanning electron microscope, ramen, and XLD results. After the CVD method, we do notice <clears throat> that we see cauliflower like shapes for samples prepared at 900. And we took our samples for ramen analysis. We can see before in implantation, we didn't see anything. And for the uh, fluences of one times 10 to the power 40, we also didn't see anything. But for the fluence of five times 10 to the power 40, we can see an amorphous HBMP. For the samples prepared at 1000 degrees, we can see tubes there and there, really, really small tubes. And we took our samples for ion implantation. Again, uh, Raman, uh, Raman uh, analysis didn't detect anything before ion implantation, but after ion implantation, we did notice an amorphous peak, especially at the fluence of five times 10 to the power 40. For the samples prepared at 1100, we can clearly see that we managed to synthesize uh, nanotubes onto our, onto our surface. And the Raman analysis do show before ion implantation, there is an amorphous HBN peak. And after ion implantation, this peak is uh, clearly crystallized because it's more sharp than the one that is before ion implantation. And this vib vibrational frequency mode is also a characteristic peak of boron nitride nanotubes. Therefore, we do have a confirmation that we have or on nitride nanotubes onto our surface. For the XLD measurements, we do notice that uh, before and after ion implantation, we did manage to uh, notice the 004 HBN peak on all of the samples. And we do notice that the intensity of the peak do changes after ion implantation. This can be due to residual stress caused by, uh, caused by radiation because the lattice parameters are changing. Uh, average crystallite size, Raman uh, spectrum revealed the dominant peak around uh, 1,366 per centimeter, which is also a typical characteristic peak of boronitride nanotubes. Uh, the work done by Nimika showed that you can determine the average crystallite domain size using the following equation, where B is the full width at half maxima and L is the average crystallite domain size. And all other calculations are included in this table. Uh, from this table is a table of the average crystallite domain size as the function of uh, the full width at half maximum. When the full width at half maximum increases, the average crystallite domain size decreases. The lifetime of a phonon depends on the width of the Raman peak. So meaning if the width decreases, the full width of at half maximum decreases, the average crystallite domain size becomes big, which means the phonon lifetime will, will be much longer, which is proven from the samples that were prepared at 1,100 because it clearly shows from the Raman spectrum that the peak is clearly crystallized. Uh, determine values for uh, the XRD spectrums. I just used the plane spacing equations for determining the latest parameter and the shape equation for determining the crystallite uh, size. Uh, this, are, this is the, uh, these are the tables of the determined values, calculated value for, values from the XRD spectra. In my conclusion, the synthesis of boron nitride was successful on 1,100 degrees. Raman analysis revealed the peak at uh, 1,367, which is an indication of the sp2 hybridized BN peak. Fluences of 5 times 10 to the power 14 show the optimum growth of boron nitride nanotubes. XRD revealed a well defined peak at angles of 55 degrees, indicating an HBN peak. The average crystallite domain size confirmed that after ion implantation, the phonon lifetime will be longer because the average domain size is large. Future work, I'm going to do more experiment, uh, CBD experiments, and do ion implantations with different ions, helium, lithium, and neon. These are my references and acknowledgments. Thank you.